Hello, I'm Dr. Ian McCullough, and in this lecture, we are going to be talking about just some common trends and statistics. So this is something that I update once a year. Uh, for this update, we're starting with uh, 2024, uh, so the data will be as of uh, October of 2023. Uh, and the site that I, I think is probably one of the best uh, sites to be able to access common trends is uh, this one here. You see this URL, uh, data report AL. Uh, dot com and uh, it just tends to give you uh, recent updates. I think they do quarterly updates on some of these. I'll update it once a year at the beginning of the year for each course. Um, but uh, please go for a refresh if you're if you're curious. Um, they also have historic ones so you can see change. So these are just a, a sample. There's about 300 plus uh, slides like this that are available on the website. These are the ones that I think are interesting. So the first one is, I think it's, it's, uh, it's good to know the current population in the world right now is a little over 8 billion. And 5 billion of them are unique mobile phone subscribers. So 5.6 billion, that's like over two thirds of the population has a unique mobile phone access. And this is including kids, this is including third world nations, uh, this is including um, you know, a lot in there. Um, the uh, individuals using the internet, uh, again, about two thirds, right? A little less. And then uh, unique social media identities is almost, it's over 60% uh, of the population, by population, has unique social media user identities. Uh, now that's not necessarily a perfect figure because some people will have more than one. Uh, you know, some people, um, you know, there's bots, there's other things like that that go into that. But still, it's it's um, it's quite a significant portion of the population. Certainly, much more in the developed world. Uh, so when we look at digital growth, too, I think this is interesting. When you look at the growth in the population, just under one percent. But then look at uh, you know the the mobile phone unique subscribers right so there's the, the the rate in which people are getting mobile phones the rate in which people are using the internet the rate in which people are gaining new social media identities all of those get increasingly faster and faster so we're beginning to see a trend where uh, we're moving to the point uh, where we are going to approach where almost everybody has. Uh, some sort of social media identity or, or user of social media. It, can, it, it increases at a faster rate than the population. Uh, when we look at the time people spend with media is another interesting uh, trend. So we see that um, uh, right now the average person spends uh, almost seven hours um, on the internet. Uh, so that is, uh, that is an increase over last year. Uh, and you know, it slowly increases, uh, you know, a few minutes a year in, in a pretty regular trend there. Um, we see less usage of television. We see actually less time spent on social media this year from last year. Um, and we see less time spent reading press uh, media. Um, uh, so, so some of the time spent online is more, but some of the common ways in which people interact with, um, with, with content is, is actually trending down, which is kind of interesting. So when we look at, um, at you know, internet use, so this is just internet first, right? And so we see that, again, there's about 5.3 billion people using, um, uh, using the internet almost seven hours a day on average. Um, we see that uh, individuals using the internet as a percentage of the total population, about two thirds of the population are using the internet. Uh, that's increasing. Um, we see that generally the percentages for male or female are, are about the same. It looks like slightly more males use the internet uh, globally. Uh, I don't think that's the trend in the U.S. I think in the U.S. it's actually women use it slightly more than men. Um, and uh, most people are accessing um, media via their mobile phone. So that remains the, the most common way in which people access the Internet uh, these days. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, you can take a look at some of those other stats as well. When you look at the internet adoption, uh, this is interesting because it shows 
what percentage of the population by region. So you can see in North America, uh, over 90% of the population has, uh, you know, use the internet. So even though that global average is just under two thirds, you know, it's, it's much, much higher in North America. If you look at Northern Europe or even Western Europe, again, it's in the high 90s. And then when you look at like East Africa, Middle Africa, that's where you have the lowest internet penetration or internet adoption. Um, and so you can take a look at some of those stats. When we look at uh, some of the daily t uh, time spent using the internet, we can look by gender here. So females will be the light blue, males will be the, the dark blue. And then each of these represents age categories. So what we find is the youngest generation are using internet the most, right? So over seven hours a day for those 16 to 24, trending down to a little over five hours a day for those 55 plus. Uh, we see again that uh, you know women tend to use the internet uh, a little bit more um, uh, in in this uh, in these stats. Uh, we saw you know overall internet unique internet use uh, was more males had internet than women, but when we look at the amount of time spent online, uh, it looks like there's not that much difference, but it looks like women are slightly more than men. Again, this is just going into more detail on the type of device used to access the internet. So most common is the mobile phone uh, or smartphone um, it, you know, in particular. Uh, then the next kind of category is a laptop or a desktop computer uh, becomes the next most. Uh, there are some people that use it on connected televisions or video game consoles or you know, other things like that as well. So uh, this is an interesting one talking about the main reasons why people are using the internet. So the first one becomes finding information. This becomes particularly important when we think about things like disinformation and propaganda and, and some of these issues. Um, so it's increasingly uh, the most common uh, way in which people are finding information or getting their news. The next common uh, reason is staying in touch with uh, friends and family, uh, followed by a new trend here, which is watching videos, TV shows, or movies. That's, that's been increasing over the last few years. Uh, and you can see that there's a lot of other reasons why people access the internet. So uh, when we're looking at um, watching online video content, uh, this is the percentage of internet users who watch each kind of video content on the internet each week. So a lot of people are watching videos of any kind. Uh, then you see this next large category of music videos. So music and entertainment of that type is very popular, followed by comedies, memes, or viral videos, right? So that's like your TikTok type uh, things or Instagram, streaming Instagram. Um, there is a, a fairly large per percentage of people that look at tutorials, how-to videos, educational videos, uh, product reviews, those sorts of things. Um, I'm surprised actually that sports clips aren't higher as a form of entertainment given how popular sports are globally. Um, but this just gives you an idea of, of why people are accessing online video content. When you're looking at which platforms people use for video entertainment, um, what we're seeing is on the left is uh, the, the rank ordered apps by the number of active users. On the right is showing you by total time spent. So what you'll see is Instagram has more active users than TikTok, but people spend more time on TikTok than they do on Instagram. YouTube, however, remains the top, uh, the top uh, app or platform. Uh, and then you can see like Netflix is mixed in there. Uh, and so you see some of these other ones like Amazon Prime Video is in there. Um, so I, I think uh, th this gives you an idea of how people are using video entertainment and, and where like something like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube compares to even something like Netflix or Amazon Prime. So now we're moving into social media use, right? So not as many um, people on social media as the internet, of course, right? So we're just under 5 billion uh, unique uh, social media identities. Um, that is an increase quarter on quarter. 
Uh, and you know, so it's increasing at a faster rate than the population. The average time somebody spends using social media is about two and a half hours. I could just compare that to six hours and 41 minutes on, um, on, uh, um, uh, online. So what you're seeing is about a third of the time spent online is on social media. So it makes up a pretty significant uh, chunk. It's down year on year uh, compared to previous year. And I think that's because it's been displaced by uh, increased interest in streaming videos like your TikToks, your Instagram, your YouTube type things. All right, so you can get an idea here for the percentages of people using it. It's a, at this point, it's a significant part of global culture, especially in the developed world like North America, Europe, um, high rates of social media use and high rates of internet penetration. So this is showing you what, uh, what those stats look like. Uh, you'll see here that Europe uh, has higher social media use uh, compared to the total population than America. Uh, and you'll see that when you're dealing with like Africa, Middle and Eastern uh, Africa it has among the lowest rates of social media use. That's also where you have the lowest internet penetration as well. When we look at the main reasons for using social media, the predominant reason is to stay in touch with friends and family. Uh, and then it becomes kind of like uh, other ways of of getting information, news stories, finding content, uh, et cetera. So what you're seeing there when you contrast that to the similar slide that was in blue previously for internet use, uh, there still is a lot of people that are just going into Google and now increasingly ChatGPT to do searches for information. They're not completely relying on social media, but there still is a, a significant uh, portion of people that are using social media as a way to understand what's going on, news, uh, articles, etc., cetera, uh, and, and finding out how people are interacting with that and what they're saying about it. Uh, you know, what are the most used social media platforms? Uh, Facebook remains top of the charts here, um, and YouTube has steadily been increasing uh, and catching up to Facebook over the last several years. Uh, it ranks number two. Uh, WhatsApp is uh, an Instagram are, are kind of tied and and they're um, you know you've seen Instagram dip for a while and is coming back since they've changed that streaming video. So initially Instagram was just pictures, uh, and then we saw TikTok and YouTube surpass uh, Instagram. Instagram changed to and allow streaming videos too, and then those active users got more engaged uh, with with the platform again, and so now Instagram has kind of crept back up. Uh, WeChat is a Chinese-based platform, so it is very regional and it's a very focused demographic, but that's a very large population. Uh, it doesn't have as much use globally. You'll also find that Facebook is uh, also uh, you know, blocked in certain countries and not, uh, not as popular, especially in, in more communist bloc countries, uh, have, have some restrictions on that. Um, Twitter is the one that used to be right up there in the top four and it has fallen quite a bit. It's now called X since Elon, er, since Elon Musk has uh, taken over control of that and, and it has fallen uh, significantly there as you can see. When we look at the time spent using the social media apps, even though TikTok doesn't have as many users, it is the most watched content platform. Then you have YouTube. Uh, then Instagram still is lagging behind Facebook and WhatsApp in terms of amount of time spent on that. Uh, when we look at the number of app sessions, so these are the number of times in which somebody uniquely logs in to look at something, you'll see that WhatsApp has a lot more. And if you're not familiar with WhatsApp, uh, it's predominantly used as a way to call people internationally and uh, it does allow you to share pictures and post updates and do various other types of things, but it, it's very much a communication type platform, and so that's why we see a lot of people logging in, checking, logging out, whereas when they log into TikTok, they'll spend more time on TikTok in a given session. Uh, so uh, when we um, ask people what their favorite social media platform is, uh, we get a slightly different uh, ranking, which is kind of interesting. Um, so people are reporting that they like WhatsApp and Instagram a lot more than, than TikTok or Facebook, uh, even though that doesn't necessarily map to how much time they spend. So it's an interesting question because 
If you're thinking about it from an advertising or marketing perspective, do you want to place your ads on what are people's favorite social media platforms? Or do you want to place it on the platforms where people spend most of their time? Or do you want to place it on the platform that has the most unique people that will see your ad? And so that becomes uh, an important nuance when we're talking about favorite, time spent, unique sessions. Uh, so this then gets at another one, which is what about web traffic referrals, right? We don't have to guess, right? We can actually look and say uh, how uh, of each of these platforms, how many referrals actually get made to a website for people to order, buy, or get uh, new, you know, additional information. So you'll you'll maybe put an ad, and the purpose of the ad is obviously not to sell you the item in, immediately, right? It's to basically get you to click on a link or go to a web page that's then going to give you information and allow you to like get more um, more qualified as a buyer to actually purchase and or donate to a cause or you know engage with a certain political discourse or whatever the, the purpose of that ad is. And so what you see here is Facebook still has the highest percentage of referrals of any of the content followed by Instagram and then X or Twitter. Um, so you see here that TikTok doesn't necessarily rate in that. YouTube doesn't necessarily rate in that, um, you know, comparatively. So this is why Facebook, Instagram, and X still remain some of the most popular social media sites or most valued social media sites in terms of ad revenue and, uh, 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 you know, how you actually, you know, receive money or funding from that. Uh, a couple of these others, you know, Reddit is uh, popular. There's a lot of custom decentralized content moderation. So people tend to like using Reddit, especially to discuss certain niche interests. LinkedIn is a different type of uh, site, which is more for professional networking and, and that kind of content. Um, you know, Tumblr and, uh, you know, is, is more for picture sharing. And it's, you know, I, I think it's like a lighter version of Instagram. Uh, VK, V Contacte, is Russia's clone of Facebook. So it's in Russian language, and it's one that's basically controlled by Russian government. So th that's the kind of the preferred site in Russia. It usually operates a couple versions behind Facebook. So, you know, initially Facebook didn't have much security from being able to pull friends and follower networks and be able to see how people are engaging with it. When they did start placing those kinds of restrictions, uh, it, it was a few years before VK did the same thing, right? And so usually you have greater access to VK. Uh, it, you know, it's easier to pull data. It's easier to analyze folks, but it's all in Russian. Um, <laughs> Uh, so when we're looking at the types of social media accounts that are followed, uh, people tend to primarily follow friends, family, people that they know, uh, then celebrities, then, you know, then it's entertainment, and then the list goes down there. We oftentimes think that these popular celebrities have like all the followers. And while it's true, they're going to have a much larger follower list, there's a very big difference between the type of relationship somebody has following a friend or family member than a celebrity in terms of the level of trust, in terms of the level of influence, in terms of, um, of the way in which they would engage, even their expectations in that relationship online. Um, so when we look at uh, Facebook engagement rates, so these are like uh, when there's a post, how much engagement you know, or what types of engagement do people uh, people have, right? Uh, the average Facebook post engagement rate overall is uh, is about 0.22%. So that means that for um, uh, every follower you have, a little less than 1% of those page followers are going to actually engage with your content. Um, and so when you're looking at uh, people that have fewer than 10,000 followers right, you'll notice that that engagement rate is much higher. And then if you look at people between 10,000 to 100,000 followers, right, so now these are not, like a normal regular person will have less than 10,000 followers, right, that uh, much less, right, so so most people um, are, are 
you know, if you're new to social media in like the first few years, you're probably around 500 or less. Uh, or if you're just uh, connected to people that you actively know today, you're probably like down in the hundreds, low hundreds. Uh, people that will accept random friend requests might get around 2,000. So somebody that's even 10,000 um, is probably either somebody that's pretty well known in their professional or, or, or friendship circles. They've been at social media for a while. They've been able to get a lot of content. So, uh, you know, I think even that 10,000 is high. But what we see is when you have a network of people that that know you and you know them and it's a real social network, you're gonna have a much higher engagement rate to the number of followers you have. When you're looking at people between 10,000 to 100,000, well, these are influencers, social media influencers, and you'll see that, that that engagements to followers is about half. But when you're looking at the number of people that are following, it's, it's a lot, it, that half is applied to a much larger number, so it actually ends up getting a, a larger reach for, for people. And then when you see the, like the large celebrities, right, there's a very, very small, uh, engagement rate for the, you know, relative to their followers. And so what we see is the, the, the bigger celebrity you are, the, the more people you know, the weaker your connections to those people are, uh, the weaker your ability to actually change opinions, influence them, shape, uh, shape beliefs, uh, get them to engage in your content. But the much more, uh, much larger number of people you're, that are actually seeing whatever it is you've posted. Uh, so even though that's smaller, you're probably having a higher reach. So as celebrity status or influencer status gets higher, the effective rate of conversion or influence goes down, but the number of people that you engage with goes up. And so that's, uh, that's one of those kind of interesting dynamics in social media. So this has been a short lecture on some of the trends and some of the uh, you know some of the things that are uh, are changing and trending in social media with some of those stats. Uh, if you're really curious, you can go to that website I presented on the first slide, and you can go to a lot more detail on some other stats. Uh, and in subsequent lectures, we're going to dive into uh, a little bit more about um, uh, cognitive influence and the way in which people's attitudes and opinions are affected by social media today.